So, is your family coming up for Thanksgiving on last minute notice? Or do you have heaps of time? Either way, we've got some delicious recipes that you can make for Thanksgiving with a little bit of a twist to make it unique this year. Preparation for the turkey starts the night before. Thaw the turkey in cold water, one half hour for each pound. Once thawed, rinse the entire bird and pat dry with a paper towel. Be generous with the salt on the skin. In a small bowl, combine three fourths cup softened butter with two tablespoons of garlic herb seasoning, one and a half teaspoons of poultry seasoning mix, and a large clove of minced garlic. Mix well with a fork or whisk until smooth. Preheat oven to 450 degrees. Next, chop up one large onion, and place in the bottom of your roasting pan. Add a small bag of baby carrots and a few stalks of celery cut into thirds. Pour in 32 ounces of chicken broth. Set this aside. Next, rub your herb butter under the skin and on the entire surface of the turkey. Put remaining butter into cavity of the bird along with a whole lemon sliced and one onion roughly chopped. Tie the bird legs together and place in the oven. As soon as the bird goes in the oven, change the temperature to 325 degrees. After an hour, baste in juices. Repeat every 20 minutes. After about 3 hours, your turkey should be done. Stick a meat thermometer into the thigh to verify that the turkey reached at least 180 degrees. After you've let your bird rest, transfer it to a cutting board and begin carving. A horizontal cut will help slice off good chunks. Doesn't that look good? Mmm, I can almost smell it now. Dice up a quarter pound of bacon and saute in a large skillet for about five minutes. Then transfer to paper towels. Add one chopped onion, three chopped celery stalks, and one diced jalapeno. Add one tablespoon of thyme and three-fourths teaspoon of chili powder. Cook for about five minutes. Pour in three cups of chicken broth and simmer for about 10 minutes. In a separate bowl, mix two eggs, one cup of diced pepper jack cheese, and the bacon. Combine all ingredients, including 8 cups of toasted white bread and 6 cups of crumbled cornbread. Place the stuffing mix in a greased muffin pan. Cover and bake at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Then uncover and bake for an additional 10 minutes. Start by cleaning the mushrooms with a damp paper towel. Carefully break off the stems and chop the stems extremely fine. Heat one tablespoon of oil in a large skillet. Add one tablespoon of minced garlic and chopped mushrooms. Cook until most of the moisture has disappeared. Set aside to cool. Once cooled, add eight ounces of cream cheese, a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and a fourth a teaspoon pepper, and a fourth a teaspoon of onion powder. Fill each mushroom with a generous amount of stuffing. Bake for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Ah, dessert, my favorite part. In a large bowl, add one can of pumpkin puree, one third cup of evaporated milk, one box of vanilla instant pudding mix, and one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and whisk together until smooth. In a separate bowl, beat one cup of cold heavy cream until you get medium peaks. Add the whipped cream to the pumpkin mixture and gently fold. Don't get rough with this or your mousse will end up flat. Layer pumpkin mix and additional whipped cream in a cup or dessert dish and put this in the fridge for at least one hour to firm up. To make the topping, toast one half pound of chopped pecans. Toasting will bring out the oils in the nuts. Careful not to burn though. When they start to brown, they're ready. Add four tablespoons of butter and saute until melted. In a small bowl, combine one half teaspoon of ground cumin, 
one half teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of orange zest. Combine spice mix and add one third cup of packed brown sugar. Splash in a couple tablespoons of water and simmer until thick, about two to three minutes. Spray a baking sheet with nonstick spray and spread pecan mixture evenly. Allow to cool until hardened, then sprinkle on top of mousse to finish. To complete our meal, we also made green bean casserole and mashed potatoes. Don't forget that the best part of Thanksgiving is getting to eat it. So enjoy your Thanksgiving and we hope you have a great holiday.